Welcome everyone to Doing Things Dan's Way. And uh, today we're gonna do something a little different. We're gonna do a board layout in LTM Designer version 19. So this is more my day job. Uh, I do a lot of boards uh, in my, my job and I have a lot of fun doing them. That and video editing are two like major fun hobbies for me. So this is kind of the epitome of all of that. I can do board layout and make a video about it. How fun is that? Okay, so what we're doing today, we're just gonna do a really simple napkin drawing design. I'm gonna just, uh, we'll just turn the camera around and I'll just show you a real simple circuit we're gonna do. I'm gonna show you every step in the process from setting up Altium Designer schematic and uh, pulling parts in from a library. We'll build a part that's unique that we don't have in the library already and we'll move all the way through the steps to uh, getting the schematic done and then we'll transfer over in the next version and click here if you wanna see just the circuit board design side of this. Uh, in the second video of this series, we will uh, talk about doing the actual board layout and uh, generating Gerbers. So this video is about getting the schematic done, so let's get to it. This is Doing Things Dance Way. Micro USB. And the output of this should be 3.3 volts, and it'll need to be an output cap as well. Perhaps maybe a smaller bypass cap. And this will be, let's say, 1.8 volts. And similarly, bypass cap. And then let's just, for fun, we're gonna call this a test point. So we can measure those voltages, and we'll stick one here too. Okay, that should be simple enough, right? Okay, so step one is to load up Altium. While this is loading, what we'll do is we will go into our file manager. We will find a, a standard uh, blank project that I have for a standard two-layer board. We'll copy that into the directory structure where we're gonna have the final project. We'll rename the files, and that will be our baseline uh, project, both on the schematic side and the PCB side. So I have a default new project template for two-layer PCB. I have this folder, and I'm just gonna grab these four files here. So we have the project itself, the PRJ, we have the schematic, we have the PCB doc, and we have an output project. So I'm gonna grab those four, copy those, and move myself into a directory structure. Let's we'll rename all of these the same. So now that I have these, I can open this project PCB file. So I can just double click on that, or I've already opened Altium, so we'll just pull it open there. So now that I have Altium open, I can go ahead and just drag and drop the project in. What it'll do is it'll immediately complain that I can't find file names that were supposed to be in the project. And that's obvious because we just changed all the names of all of them. So we just say yes to all these errors that are gonna pop up about missing files. What we get here is we get our project open with no documents at all. So what we'll do is we'll right click on demo board and we will say add existing to project. And it will open up the folder that the project lives in. And here we can see the other three files. The project is already opened obviously. So it's showing the schematic, the PCB and the out uh, output uh, configuration file. So all we're gonna do now is just select all three of these and open all of them. And what it does is it automatically populates these into their appropriate structure over here in the project. So now what we have is uh, we have a generic blank schematic sheet. And this of course can be changed. This starts off as a size A uh, 
schematic, but we can change it. I already have some of the properties in the title block filled in, at least for my name. Uh, if you look at the PCB, so what we see here is a nice generic template for a PCB. It has a pre-designed, you know, 40 millimeter square circuit board. It has notes for a standard two-layer double-sided board with uh, a multi-layer board, white solder mask on a blue solder mask, sorry, white silk screen on a blue solder mask layout. It shows the layer stack up for the two-layer board. And there will be a drill drawing here with all the symbols. And then just a standard template. The title block. There's also an inverse title block if you want to use that. So this is good to go. You can do a nice large board here. Um, and this can handle a, what is that, a, a, a nine by five inch board in that space. So lots are in the play. Okay, so let's jump back to the schematic for a second. So kind of step one in all of this, notice that the project itself is missing um, title, it's missing a few other things. So what we'll do is we'll go to tools, actually to project, project options, and we'll go to, let's see, let's click two things here. I always start by clicking under class generation and turning off this generate rooms function. That's just annoying later when we generate the PCB. And then under parameters, here we have the types of information that show up in our PCB and schematic templates. So we can give it a part number or a project number, you know, who drew it, all that good stuff. So in this title, I'm gonna say, this is a uh, 2010 double board. Okay, what we'll see is these don't show up right now um, until we put them in the, to the parameters as well. But you see it show up there, and you see it show up. Oh, you know what? This one isn't a dot title, so this has to be manually entered. So you can just double click on it and uh, it's title too. Now let's see, let's come back to projects for a sec. Now in terms of navigation, I'm using the scroll on the mouse here to zoom in and out. And I right click and hold to move the board around. If yours is not doing that in schematic or in PCB, again, zooming with the scroll, right click and holding to move. If yours is not doing that, you go here to tools, preferences, and there is an option under system called wheel, mouse wheel configuration. So you'll see here, the default is not what I have it to. So zoom the main window, turn off the checkboxes here, and that will give you that zoom in and out function. That to me is super critical because I'm constantly zooming in and out and you know, popping on something and double clicking, that sort of thing. Okay. Okay, so now what we have is we have our, our nice little uh, napkin drawing here of what we wanted to do with a micro USB connector, input cap, the dual LDO part, and the two outputs, and a couple test points. So we can go browsing through the online available library that LTM gives us. Uh, we uh, have a, a full default library. And what I have is I have a library of parts that I've used historically. And every time I use a new part, I drag it into this. So let me show you that. If we go to file, open, we're just gonna open a file here. We're not gonna open a project. Standard components. So here we have a standard parts schematic. This will open up this rather large schematic. This is a D size plot. Actually, it's an E size plot. See how small the title block is down here. And what I have, just looking from a very high level, 
Um, close this down for a second. So we have all different kinds of caps, resistors of different sizes, uh, headers, battery terminals, test points, fuses, inductors. Over here on the right, we have a bunch of default blocks, so programming headers, uh, serial and parallel, or serial interfaces, that sort of thing. Click, microelectronic click bus. I come down here, I have all kinds of P-channel, N-channel MOSFETs and diodes, and a lot of you know, LDOs, a lot of ICs, LDOs, op-amps, MOSFET drivers, and then a series of picks that I've used recently. So this is a way of just dragging in and creating my own library of parts. And then quite literally what I have in my office here is I have a whole box uh, of Ziploc bags of all of these parts that I've bought. So every time I go to buy, you know, a 100 ohm resistor, I don't buy the 10 that I need in surface mount form. I buy 100 because it's basically the same price. And then I have a stockpile of parts. So a lot of the parts that you see on this schematic, I have uh, extras from from some build somewhere. So I have a nice collection of parts to play with. Uh, so what I can do is pull parts from here directly and then drop them into uh, my schematic. So first thing I have on my little napkin drawing here is a micro USB connector uh, and some test points and bypass caps. So let's go ahead and grab those. So here's a micro USB connector. Uh, I have test points here and we'll grab one of those. I might as well grab a screw terminal uh, for our output um, to be connected to. So I'll grab a four pin output terminal for the two two outputs, so two grounds, um, and then 1.1, 1.8, 3.3 volts, for example. And that's all I can see right here. So I'm just doing a contr holding control and then clicking on the items. I'm sorry, shift. So USB, screw terminal, and a test point. Control C, come over to my schematic here, Control V. And it's gonna show a box here that shows the extents of the parts. So you can see these kind of spread all out. So I'm just gonna click and drag and move. Spacebar rotates. So pop those in the space. This is the output connector. So anyway, just kind of just kind of throw these on here to start with. Uh, I need a 0.1 and a 4.7 mic capacitor. So I come back to my standard parts, right click and drag down on my caps here. And I need a 4.7 mic cap. There's a 10 volt, 50 volt. And you can see these rows are of, of a of a value in this case. So here's all my, these are like two 4.7s I have right now. So I'll grab this 805. I also need a bypass cap and a 50 volt part is perfectly fine. Um, and notice up here it says these are all default to 603s unless otherwise stated. So this would be a 603 cap, X7R. And here would be my 10 volt uh, 4.7 is fine. Control C, over here, Control V, Let's drop these in. Okay, so now we need that 5310 part. I just noticed I have the this spelled incorrectly. So double clicking on this, you can see how this sidebar came up really small. If I click somewhere else over here, it goes away again. So the way the sidebars work, if you have if you click on properties, for example, it's going to pop up and there's this little pin. So if you change the size of this, this is the size it will be when it's not pinned. And you can click away, it, it disappears like that. So, and then if you click pin, it'll come up as a different size. So just realize it's, it doesn't use the same size for the one that comes and goes. So you can just make this go away by unpinning the sidebar which is super helpful. Um, it lets you adjust things. So I'm gonna double click on this guy and change this to a 5310. That's really what it is. Uh, in fact, the full part number is a dash 
looking for that part. Now I have a library here, projects. Oh, I don't have a component. So if we go down here in the bottom right corner to panels. I can pull up a panel. Like right now the project panel is open. You can see it there. I can add the component panel. Let's see where it shows up. Okay, it showed up over here. Sometimes the panels can show up as just free floating things. It'll show up like this. And once you grab, you click and hold, left click and hold, and move it, you'll see these little pop-ups happen here, which lets you dock. So I dock this over here. Let me go into my, this is the analog part. So this is super common, but I do not have a I do not have a model for this part. So that means I have to start from scratch. Or it means because this is just a simple LDO, I may have to start from something that's somewhat close and then tune it to be accurate. So okay, let's go ahead and get the the schematic for this part. Let's start there. Two by two MLF, eight pin part. So we'll need a footprint for that, and then we'll need to get a pin. Okay, there's our actual pin configuration. So obviously we we'll need to map map that. Okay, we'll come back to this in a minute. Uh, let's go ahead and find a footprint for it. I'll do this. seem to be a real mystery in the uh, when it comes to schematics and I want to prove to you right now that it really doesn't have to be so hard so at any time we can go up here to uh, design and say make schematic library and what this will do when I click on this is it's going to take it's going to ask how do you how do we want to group these we can just use the default and click OK it added five components and what we have is a a library. Oh, my uh, my window showed up on a different screen here. Let me bring it over. Let me dock it. Okay. So what it created was a schematic library that has the five parts that are on our schematic. Very simple. And so any one of these, there's the point one. here's our 4.7 mic, here's our mini. So I'll grab this. So you can see it's all here. Now if I want to, I can just say, you know, I can edit one of these very quickly. So here's, you know, even the 3D model of, of the uh, micro USB connector, for example. Here's the, uh, the schematic. So I can double click on a pin and all the pin parameters come up, the designator, all that good stuff. So if I want to make the designator pin numbers show up, I can just turn on the little Next to pin number one, I just turn on the, the visibility, and you can see it pop up there. So, so that's very simple. And then here, for example, you can see 
um, is labeled as electrical type I.O. as opposed to, in this case, a power pin or a, a power pin that's labeled ground, pin 5. So I'm not worried about the pin numbers in this part. This part, I think, is fine. Uh, what we want to do is make that LDO. So what we can do is we can just come back over here and say Tools, New Component. And we need to create a unique ID for this. So very simple, Mike. 2355. Do that. Yeah. So now I have a design, a unique design identifier there. The designator is going to be a U question mark. Comment. We'll call this a Mike 2355. Um, 3.3 dash. 1.8 volt. Okay, so this is a way of just starting from scratch, and we can do a description, LDO, blah, blah, blah. And now we can go ahead and start placing um, that's not what, what I want, is to draw place a rectangle. Okay, place a rectangle. Now I can place a pin, P, press the P key for place, place a pin, and I'll tab to my data sheet for a second here. So pin one is VN. So I'm just gonna say, now, another tip here, when you're in this mode, I'm I'm moving a part, or if I've just selected a part, let's say I come in here, I, I've selected it, whatever selected is gonna show up over on this side. So again, if I say place pin PP and press the tab key, it, you see how it says pause right here? Now what that means is now the, the focus, the control has all been pushed over here. But until we type something over here and press enter, or until we press the equal sign, we're kind of stuck. So sometimes this is confusing because you you press tab, you may have changed something and it didn't release the, the, the pause here. So just be aware of that. So here we can say, okay, designator number one, the pin name was VM, VM. This is a power pin. I don't need a description or any of that fun stuff. Um, yeah, and so I'm just tabbing through and notice I'm still in pause mode. So I'll come over here, unpause, and now I can select the pin. Now the the point that I'm touching right now is the hot point. It's the electrical connection for traces. So if I do this, I would have to draw a wire all the way to this point and my V and labels in the, is in the wrong place. So a couple of ways I can move this around. I can press spacebar and rotate. I can press X to do an X mirror. I can do Y, which is a Y mirror, which does nothing on this part. Um, so what I want is it to look like that. And uh, I also think I want this to be 200 mils instead of 300. Okay, so V in, pin number two was ground. So again, press tab, come over here, change this to ground. I'll keep it called power. V in ground. What else we have here? Bypass and enable two. Now this one, oops, uh, this one is BYP. And this is more of an I.O. pin, or you could just say it's a, um, it's going to a capacitor. So I guess I would call that an output. And then last one is EN2. And EN2 is a input. So it should be some kind of driver or pull-up resistor or something on that. I notice the pin number is incrementing automatically. Okay, so pin five is EN1 and then no connect. So I'm gonna press this base bar twice, or I can just press X to rotate. Now notice this is kind of crowded, so I, I can change the, the yellow rectangle later. So I'll just go ahead and spread it out. EN5, tab, NC. No connect. Now seven is a V out two and a V out one. So this is V out two. 
and it auto incremented the V outward, which is kind of interesting, to three. We really want one. Okay, so D out one. Now that all looks really crowded. Now this is a lot like AutoCAD, where if you select to the right, you have to select the entire part to highlight it. If I select from the left, anything I just barely touch will get highlighted. So in this case, I can just select you know, to the left. Doesn't matter whether you're going up or down or not. But if I select the left, I can just barely touch it, click and hold, and I can move this whole thing out. And then I'll grab this rectangle, make it look a little nicer. And that should be the same as this. Except my Vouts should be outputs, not inputs. Outputs. Okay. And you can see the arrows that show up. Of course, all that's something you can adjust. Um, okay, now, if I there's two ways of doing schematics. Uh, there's this kind of uh, physical layout methodology where I'm always making things look exactly like the part looks in terms of pinout. Then there's also more of a functional style, which I tend to stick more with the functional style personally. So let's make this more of a functional style part where I have inputs, outputs, and the part is kind of exploded into a more schematically friendly view. So coming back to this, uh, my no connect uh, can be anywhere. Let's move that out of the way. I like having inputs on the left and outputs on the right. Uh, I didn't notice I had the input numbered wrong. Right. And one, okay. Great. Okay, so come over here, tab tab, or spacebar, spacebar. Let's make the enables kind of nicer looking. And normally a bypass cap is about three three blocks high. Um, so if I put the ground and the in, uh, you know, three increments away from each other, a bypass cap will look really nice right here. So I'm going to do that. And I'm going to push the enables. Um, I have to think about how I want to draw the enables. And the bypass cap will be a bypass straight to ground as well. So I'm going to spread things out kind of like this. And this is something I'm going to come back to several times. This is not something I want to spend a bunch of time on right now. And then definitely spread out these V-outs because they're going to have bypass caps and ground symbols and everything. So I'll go ahead and spread those out nice and big. And this no connect can be anywhere. In fact, we could even, we could make it disappear, quite honestly. Um, we, we could make it not even show up. So what we have now is our part drawn out. Now what I haven't talked about yet at all are parameters. If we go to parameters, you can see that there are none. And if we go to one of the other parts in our schematic library here, um, oh, okay, I need to delete that. Yes, I accidentally click uh, add part, new part. So if you have a part that logically has, let's say, um, two different parts to it, like a inverter or something, a multi-channel inverter, you can break up each channel into its own symbol and actually have a part have multiple bits and pieces that are broken out. A large processor can be broken into several pieces, for example. So okay, if we just look at our, like, just our mini uh, USB here, um, if you look at, let's just click on edit. So there's our mini USB. Okay, it looks great. Um, if I look on parameters, there's a whole series of parameters that have been put in here by the, the person who actually designed it, which is this guy. He must have been the, the person who has the owner who did this. So these category names are completely arbitrary, 100% arbitrary, and it's up to you to create a system that works. So we have the system where we have the word description with an underscore afterwards to uniquely identify this as a part number from our um, part numbering system. Um, let's slide this over a little bit. And then the rest of this are just, again, arbitrary fields that we use uh, regularly. So when you are creating parts, you do want to keep to a system. So going back to our other part, though, for example, 
uh, the LDO. If I edit this guy, notice I have no parameters. So another way to do a new project or a new part is to take a part and we're going to duplicate that part. So if I right click on, let's say, ideally you do the same kind of part, um, but just for the sake of brevity, I'm gonna right click on this capacitor and say copy, and then right click again and say paste. And hey, look, I have a alternate part. So if I click edit on that guy, and give it a new name, you know, new cap one, whatever. Um, and you know, give it a new designator and, and all this stuff. But notice now all my parameters are copied over. So I can go through and I can edit all the parameters and you know and change them as needed. So it really is a, a much better um, style of, of working on a part instead of starting completely from scratch to find something that's awfully close or a part that's already in your system and to go ahead and just manipulate that part into being uh, having the information you need for your specific part. So jumping back to our part here that we just built, this LDO. Okay, this all looks good. For the moment, I'm just going to ignore the, um, the fact that we don't have the proper parameters in there. But what I'll do is I will come in here, highlight it, and click Place. And guess what? Now we're placing the part back on our original schematic again. So what we can do here is we can start being a little more um, specific in our layout. Um, I don't need this big long description in this test point. So again, if I just double click on it, click on that text. This value here is really long and it's visible. I don't need it. So I'm just going to take that away. Okay, so Now something to note here, just a general term. See down here under grid, we're currently set to 50 mils. Um, the standard grid that we tend to lay out boards on is a 100 mil grid for the sake of schematics only, okay? So as I place a part here, you can see it's going, I have sub increments inside the grid I can move it to. Well, I've zoomed in far enough. Well, there you go, see? Now if I press the G key, you'll notice the grid here toggles between 100 mil 10 mil and 50 mil. 10 mil is ideal for fussing with getting a label just right. If you want to have it look just super, super nice or tuned very, very nicely, a 10 mil grid is great for that. Um, sometimes even just the 50 mil grid gets you enough resolution to get close. But like now you can see that I'm, I'm starting from a weird grid because I've kind of left it on a weird grid. Um, and so I have to go back to that 10 mil grid and adjust it. So I'm just going to undo a couple times here. I live on the, the 100 mil grid as much as possible. That just makes drawing lines that much easier. It puts everything on the dots, as you can see. This one here looks like it, I got I placed it on the 50 mil grid. See how it's not on a corner. But if I stay on the 100 mil grid, I can't get back to a. Oh, it did because I'm hot. I'm okay. It went to the hot point of that pin. So that actually worked out better than I thought. Sometimes you have to change the grid back to 50 and get it back on a grid before you change it to 100 and then move it around. So anyway, that worked out better than I thought. So let me just do a little cleanup here. We have our V-Bus is going to come in. We're going to want to have that 4.7 on the VN. Okay, look what I did here. I, I was guessing three. We actually need, for this cap, I need four increments between these two pins. So now, look how easy this is. I'm going to go click back over on my schematic library. And click on that LDO. I'm just going to grab that pin and move it down by one increment. In fact, I'm going to go down by two increments because I saw the text there kind of needing more space. And all I have to do is go Tools, Update Schematics. It will tell me that I updated it in whatever schematic it found. If I have multiple schematics with the same part open, it'll update all of them. So be very careful if you have multiple designs, especially completed designs open, when you do this, because you might may accidentally force an update back on your on a schematic that you didn't intend to. Okay, so now this, this will route nicely. I'll put the bypass cap up there as well. And these red lines just mean it's a DRC error because I have two caps with the same name here.
I probably have two J's. Yeah, see? So I'm just going to line these up nice and clean here. The test point will need to be on this line. Uh, let's go ahead and draw some lines. So uh, P for place, W for wire, or just control W, place the wire. And I'm just going to draw this out and draw this guy. It looks like grounds off by one there. Now these are going to be so close together I'm not going to bother having separate bypass caps for this connector. Now if I grab the connector, depending on the behavior you have set up right now, notice it's not dragging those traces with the part. I'm just moving the part around. Um, if I press the whole control, now I'm dragging. Now it's possible to reverse this behavior so that as soon as you click on it, it's actually already in move mode instead of in like like drag mode like this. So pressing and hold control again and moving, you can see how I get a different behavior. So I can decide that, you know, as I'm drawing, I can be making changes quickly. Now if I press and hold shift on a part, so I'm going to grab this guy with my left mouse button, while I'm holding the shift key down, well guess what, now I just made a duplicate. If I just grab him, I'm going to move him, but shift and click, or pull I should say, and you get this behavior. So I'm going to take these two, now I'm going to take both of these, shift, drag, and see I'm, I'm duplicating the part. Now these are way too close together. I won't be able to route ground to them nicely. So I'm going to just push these guys way down here. And I need me to move the V out. One, two, three increments down. Three grids. Let's go back to schematic library. Grab these two with a left drag so I can just quickly grab them. If I try and right grab, if I drag and hold here, I'll move the box. Let's see. So I can do a select inside and then draw a box. Or I could just start from the right and move left, just barely touch them, and I get them. Now, one, two, three, one, two, three down. Tools, update schematics, okay. Go back to my schematic, and here I am. Now I'm nicely in the line, alignment. Draw that line. All this line. What I'm going to do is have him. Uh, another little thing here: if I press the space bar, it changes the behavior of the uh, the line draw or the orientation, the way it works. So if I come up here and I'm going the wrong direction, I can toggle that way. And I'm going to hold down Control and drag this to the right. And again, I can I can drag a trace around. Or if I press control, I can drag and keep the connections going. Okay. Now let's talk about ports. So if I do a place power port, or a PO, I'll get a port. And you see on the right, on the left here, sorry, if I click tab, now I can change the parameters of it. So if I call this B bus, for example, and look at styles, I have all these different kinds of styles. A circle, a bar, a wave, you get the idea. I'm a fan of bars. Now, this also has the effect of naming the net it's connected to. Where? So I have this now be bus. Now let me do a ground port. So PO tab. And let's do a power ground. Now let's do a single ground. Like that. Okay. And now spacebar to rotate him. Or I can press Y to rotate him down, but spacebar is the most common. It's for me. 
and I can put these in several spots. Right? These are all grounds. Now it would look nicer here. I'm going to press Control and drag this down. And control and drag this down. It just lets the text breathe a little bit. Control. Now this just seems crowded again. So again, I'm going to move this whole thing down a notch. Remember how to do that? Tools, update schematics, okay. Double board. Okay, now I can grab, let's right click and grab all this. I'm going to shift and click on this guy to highlight him, and then press control and drag. Now see in the upper right corner there what it's doing? It's actually shorting those two nuts out. So if I just... Yeah, I'm going to unselect those two. I'm doing that by pressing and holding shift and clicking on them. It's still waiting to go. Okay. Oops. Let's get back out of there. There we go. Everything's reconnected. Now maybe it's like super redundant to have these extra grounds here. Especially this one. So I'm just going to click and drag this guy make him go away. And... Obvious up the ground to me anyway. And test points. I'm going to click hold shift and copy this guy. Give myself a V out there. Hold shift. Drag down. Okay, so I have test point on VN, V out one, V out two. Now I need to do something with these enables and the bypass. So the bypass is a cap. Let's look at the data sheet for a second. Connect external point one cap to ground to reduce output noise. Maybe left open when bypass cap is not required. Well, let's use it. He said bypass cap, so we're just going to take a simple point one, drop in there. Again, just holding shift, hold shift and drag. Oh, what am I doing? Bummer. How did I not see this? Okay, let's delete these grounds. It can't be called VBUS, what am I doing? You've probably been screaming at me the whole time. Ground, okay. Shift, copy. Shift, copy. Control W. Now these enables, they're active high. I assume they're referenced to VN. Enable input. Yeah. Enables. Those should be VN referenced. Okay. So I'm just going to connect those to VN. So I could, I could just hard connect them up here. Um, I could also kind of tie them together here, shift, drag, from B bus, and do that. That is simple enough. That seems a little crowded, so I might move this down. Let's see how quickly this should happen. Back to move it up too. So you get the idea, once you've got the kind of the pattern set up, you can very quickly create these custom footprints that look very nice. They're very easy to read um, as a schematic. I prefer a schematic to look nice, and even if the pin order isn't perfect, then to have the PCB match a schematic symbol and have the schematic hard to read, those are just kind of my, my preferences. 
Let's see, there's a pin here for the shield. Let me go ahead and tie that to ground too. Okay, so V-Bus comes in, we have a test point, bypass caps, V in, V out, bypass caps. That's kind of all there is to this, right? So let's go ahead and uh, do an annotation. Now, annotation is to get rid of or replace all the designators with fresh designators that actually kind of makes sense. So under tools, we're going to go to annotation. And we can go to the annotation schematics screen. And let's let, let you dig into all of the details of, of how this is done, the order, you know, up and across. And you can do all kinds of things. Um, I prefer to use just the defaults across then down. Sorry, across then down. Um, and I don't tend to change any of this stuff, but it will show you. Um, you can click this update change list and it will show you a list, okay, that these designators are going to be changed to these designators. And you can really nitpick this. You can export a report. You can do back annotation, all these great things. I'm going to do something that I prefer, which is to use this tool. Tool, annotate, annot annotate schematics quietly. And what this does is without any fuss or extra menus, it just does it. <laughs> it's just that simple. Now, notice, because it went across them down, sometimes it does some wonky things. So here we have C3, then C1, 4, then 2. So because this designator was a little higher than this designator, uh, it actually kind of made this a little bit screwy in terms of the numbering system. So all I'm going to do is come in here and readjust these to be like even with the one next to it because then across then down kind of failed because of this little lack of symmetry. So this should take more than a second. Okay, I'm going to go to Tools, Annotation, and then Reset Duplicates or Reset All. So I'm going to say Reset Schematic Designators. And asking, do you want to, to remove them all? Yes. We're back to nothing but question marks. Tools annotate, back to annotate schematics quietly. There we go, C1, C2, C3, C4, C5, C6. That, that was kind of an oddball example. I normally don't see that much kind of odd behavior, if you will. Um, but that's our little, our little schematic. So from here, let's go ahead and do a little DRC. I'm gonna come up to project and say compile. What the compile will do, it, if there are um, any errors, it's like going to pop up and give us an error. So let's make an error. Let's change this cap to be a C1. So we have two C1s. So not, not only do we see the error, if I do a project compile, uh, we're going to get an error menu. It popped up on another screen here. Let me drag it over and dock it to the left. Okay, so it just came up with component designators as duplicates. And if you double click, it'll jump right to the, to the issue and even highlight it for you. So if you fix that, so C2. In fact, it even shows you that it used to be a C1, which is kind of nice. Now let's do a recompile. And now notice I don't get any messages popping up. Compile successful, no errors. Great. Now the next thing we're gonna do, now that we have our schematic done and it's been validated, and mind you, if you have mistakes on your inputs and outputs, or if I have a, you know, if I put a V bus on this, well, it is input, never mind. Um, if I put a V bus on an output pin, for example, then you'll start getting these port errors. Like, you have an input connected to a tri state, or you have an output connected to an input. And a lot of times these are just annoying. So, VBus contains output pin and power pin objects, so it gives you an error and it's going to flag it again. It's going to show you know, little squigglies where your problem is. Um, so, mind you, you may have some stuff you even decide to ignore because it's more of a hassle to fix it than to deal with it. Okay, so now that we have a, again, a clean compile, we're going to say design update PCB document, and here's the name of the document it's going to update. Okay, timeout! 
Uh, yeah, I have to jump in here because we've gone almost an hour now and it's uh, time to take a break as we transition into doing the board layout itself. So we have a schematic done, we have a clean DRC on the schematic side, we are ready to go to boards. So the next video we will be jumping into the board design itself, uh, laying this thing out and we'll get ourselves to the actual file generation of the Gerbers. And from Gerbers we will upload the files to a website that will actually uh, build and you know, fabricate the boards for us. And a week from now, we'll have boards in hands and we can solder it up and we can actually play. So that's what's coming up next. Uh, click here if you want to see the continuation of this project. And uh, click down here if you want to see some other content that I've put on. This is Doing Things Dan's Way. And until next time, be blessed.